Good morning, and welcome to the Secretary's Award Celebration. My name is Janine Corrado, and I'm the Chief of Staff in the Management Directorate, and I'll be serving as your MC today. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome leadership from the department, invited guests, and most importantly, the awardees who we honor and celebrate this morning. We are live streaming today's ceremony. Unfortunately, some awardees are unable to join us in person, but we hope that they are able to join us on the live stream and hear their honors. It's my honor to turn the podium over to Secretary Mayorkas for some opening remarks. Secretary. Thanks very much, Janine. Um, first, I see uh, leadership from U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Uh, if you'd be so kind uh, to stand and be recognized. I want, to, um, I want to recognize some uh, other individuals, uh, other than, of course, the, the awardees to whom we um, uh, dedicate uh, this ceremony. First, uh, one of the uh, characteristics or one of the qualities uh, that really distinguishes our department uh, is the number of individuals who have served and are serving in our armed forces. If those of you... Um, who are serving and who have served in our armed forces, if you would be so kind as to stand and be recognized for your career of service. <laughs> the second group I would like to um, asked to stand and be recognized um, will be the family members who are here uh, as well. Uh, we all know uh, that with service comes sacrifice, and when one serves, the family serves as well. And so would the family members of award recipients um, please stand and be recognized. Thank you for your service. And I will, I will say that one of the special things about um, giving awards out to particular individuals is in doing so, uh, we really recognize the men and women throughout the Department of Homeland Security because the achievements of one cannot be uh, really accomplished without the contributions of many. So in recognizing our award recipients, we really uh, recognize everyone who does such extraordinary work in this Department of Homeland Security. And I'm incredibly uh, proud uh, to participate in this ceremony and to work alongside all of you and your colleagues. So I'm looking forward to this ceremony. Janine, please. Thank you, Secretary. Like last year, the DHS Secretary's Awards are being presented at regional ceremonies around the country and in the national capital region acknowledging exceptional work being done across the department by DHS employees. In doing so, we will tell the stories of their accomplishments, contributions, and in some cases, heroic acts that were all in the name of public service. We are honored to serve alongside these employees and have this special time to recognize their work. Today, we recognize individuals and teams who have made outstanding contributions to the Department of Homeland Security and to our nation. During this ceremony, I will share a brief description of the award categories. Secretary Mayorkas will read the recipient honors before he asks the awardees to stand and be recognized. Let's begin. The Secretary's Award for Innovation. This award recognizes individuals or teams that employ a strategic and enterprise-wide approach to, st to strengthen the Department of Homeland Security mission and its operations. The nominees should exhibit an ongoing record of high standards of achievement and innovation. The work of the nominee or nominees may have resulted in superior performance and or significant operational improvements. The nominee's achievements and contributions should include maximizing the effectiveness of people, processes, and technologies providing wise stewardship of resources and enhancing the capabilities of DHS employees. 
the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency National Risk Management Center's suite of tools for the analysis of risk, or STAR team, is responsible for building and advancing CISA's cutting-edge strategic risk analysis platform. Throughout 2023, the STAR team added data for over 1 million additional infrastructure assets and dependencies, integrated 12 additional risk analysis capabilities, and published 10 training documents and user guides. In addition, the team conducted over 1,000 user hours of training for over 640 potential users. The team's diligence improved not only CISA's enterprise risk management capabilities, but also directly contributed to partners' critical infrastructure, security, and resilience projects. Please join me in recognizing, from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Brian Burley, Christopher Goodrich, Thaddeus Grace, Georgette Holmes, Mitchell Most, Kevin Murphy, and Christopher Redinger. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Secure by Design team is recognized for developing the Secure by Design initiative that aims to shift the cybersecurity burden away from customers and towards technology manufacturers. This team provided a seismic shift in how we as a nation not only develop but adopt new technology. In addition, the Secure by Design team identified one of the core challenges facing the United States, collective adoption of insecure technology. To address this, the team developed a campaign aimed at adoption of a new model that prioritized consumer safety. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Jack Cable, Caitlin Ianello, Amanda Glenn, Alexa Schaefer, Tony Solis, and Aaron Bukel, which Jorek. I want to uh, recognize one of our other department leaders who has joined us, Under Secretary for Strategy, Policy, and Plans, Robert Silvers. I also want to apologize if I mispronounce any names. I empathize uh, considerably. <laughs> the DHS Freedom of Information Act Boot Camp Team is commended for their successful launch of a comprehensive department-wide Freedom of Information Act Boot Camp. This initiative has equipped hundreds of DHS personnel with essential training covering all aspects of the Freedom of Information Act life cycle. The week-long program was thoughtfully designed for both Freedom of Information Act and non-Freedom of Information Act professionals, enhancing their understanding of the Act and promoting compliance. Please join me in recognizing, from the Privacy Office, Leticia Bobongi, Eric Neuschaefer, Henry Rand, and Corinna Stewart. U.S. Customs and Border Protection's Office of Field Operations Innovation Center IT Emergency Technology Team is recognized for developing and deploying multiple public-facing mobile capabilities. The mobile capabilities include collecting and validating biometric and biographic identity data from unknown travelers. This capability enables advanced vetting and adjudication for travel on commercial aircraft. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Brittany Cashwell, Manisha Duneje, Jody Harden, Sunil Madujiri, Edward Mays, and Christopher White. <laughs> Operation Chainbreaker or OCB, is an innovative national initiative created in response to combat the opioid and fentanyl crises plaguing our nation. 
OCB was designed to leverage various law enforcement platforms to collectively target Chinese pill press manufacturers and the Mexican transnational criminal organizations utilizing pill press equipment to facilitate the mass production of dangerous synthetic drugs being smuggled into the United States. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Patrick Hosey. The Shelter and Services Program Team developed and issued $363.8 million for the Shelter and Services Program under extreme time and resource constraints. The DHS team worked with stakeholders on the southwest border to hear their concerns and put a high visibility and politically sensitive grant program into action in less than six months. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Olympia Belay and Michael Hammert. <laughs> U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Ontology Team for Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems Team, or SUAS, is commended for pioneering a cutting edge artificial intelligence and machine learning capability at CBP. Through a year-long collaboration between CBP operators and subject matter experts, a groundbreaking ontological use case was developed to showcase how semantic interoperability among data sources could enhance decision-making by integrating with CBP's Team Awareness Kit. This prototype significantly reduces the cognitive burden on agents and officers by as much as 90% allowing them to concentrate on security threats amidst the operational environments, complexities, and distractions. Please join me in recognizing, from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Claire Allen. <laughs> the System of Systems Operation Analytics Team, or SOSOA, developed several tools allowing the White House and DHS to evaluate migrant policy options, including a new migrant encounters projection tool for the Office of Immigration Statistics, and significantly enhanced OIS's enforcement throughput model. In addition, the SOSOA team conducted rigorous analysis and outreach with key U.S. Border Patrol, Department of Health and Human Services, and U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement partners. Across component offices and contracts, the SOSOA team used operational data to analyze potential costs, consider multiple factors, and identify cost savings. Please join me in recognizing, from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Maria King, Martina Millayand, and Nadwa Mossad. The United States Coast Guard Short Range Unmanned Aircraft Systems Team is recognized for exhibiting an ongoing record of innovation leveraging the capabilities of newly employed, commercially vetted Blue UAS. The team purchased 168 new Blue UAS devices and trained over 360 Coast Guard personnel as new Blue UAS pilots. The team obtained the first federal authority to operate these devices as an information system. The team also developed the Coast Guard's first enterprise-wide digital mapping software dashboard to capture flight and imagery data. These capabilities represent a seismic shift in Coast Guard operational methods, reducing demands on finite manned aircraft resources. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard Jacob Cheeseman, Kevin Deininger, Matthew Hardgrove, Sammy Hill, and Zachary Speck. The Secretary's Award for Team Excellence. This award recognizes any unit within the department, such as a component, directorate, office, division, or section, 
with outstanding chief achievements in operational areas such as law enforcement, aviation, cybersecurity, border patrol, hiring, acquisition, and information technology. Their work will have resulted in measurable improvements in training and development, and will have demonstrated an investment in the workforce to make it more capable. The work of the unit will include superior performance and significant operational improvements and or notable innovation in support of DHS missions. The Business Operations Division is the pulse of the Privacy Office. It ensures the efficiency of Privacy Office operations and the execution of its internal and external communication strategies. Their work behind the scenes facilitates the Office's and Department's missions, including developing the workforce, enhancing transparency, and establishing a culture of excellence. Please join me in recognizing, from the Privacy Office, Monica Carter Johnson, Jessica Cooper, Sue Ying Cosbert, Sandra Debnam, Wafun Holmes, Rhea King, Melanie Long, Amy Napsiger, Leslie Schwager, and Tamara Walker. The Coast Guard Yard 270-foot service life extension programs and non-Pacific support cutter team enabled national strategic priorities in the Indo-Pacific via the Coast Guard Cutter Harriet Lane Service Life Extension Program, or SLEP. The team masterfully incorporated the injection of $6 million of vital maintenance work to support the cutter's transfer to the Indo-Pacific on extremely short notice. This effort continued an 800% acceleration in normal milestone timelines. In addition to the risks associated with significantly small planning windows, the team fought major supply challenges and successfully pursued inventive sourcing strategies to acquire long lead time materials to enable an on-time completion of the ambitious amended specification. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard, Eric Alexander, Barry uh, Upolin, Stephen Bailey, Timothy Bahan, Gabriel Benson, Anthony Bernacki, Adam Brown, James Calvert, Buford Carroll, Darren Conrad, Seth Crittenden, Dennis Curry, Christopher Darrow, Jacob Davis, Joshua DiPietro, Raymond Dix, Ivan Dorsey, Matthew Dumshaw, Joseph Esposito, David Forrest, Cody Fultenberger, Daniel Garza, Michael Griffith, Che Hale, Jonathan Hartman, Leonard Hurd, Riley Ingraham, James Justice, David Keats, Ronald Lohman, Thomas Machensky, Jr., Tommy Minor, Michael Nolan, Gary Oakley, Christopher O'Connell, Matthew Orgill, Vincent Peterson, Matthew Powers, Justin Price, Douglas Rutherford, David Scharf, Walter Skorunski, Kevin Sikowski, Anisha Vester, Scott White, Leon Wilson, and Christian Wooden. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Infrastructure Security Division Faith-Based Community Team developed a critical resource for the faith-based community to provide a set of baseline security best practices that assist houses of worship to reduce risk through tangible security measures that are scalable depending on existing security protocols and available funding. This resource is critical given the dynamic threat environment exacerbated by domestic and geopolitical tensions. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Daniel Abriu, Daniel Avondolio, Katrina Brassfield, Scott Breyer, William Brown, 
Aileen Clemente, Nalili De Jesus, Scott Dunford, Sean Fiebiger, Lori Goodell, Daryl Hernandez, Christina Johnston Pulliam, Robert Mooney, and Haley York. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency School Safety Task Force, or SSTF, and United States Secret Service's National Threat Assessment Center Team, or NTAC, demonstrated exceptional leadership, partnership, and dedication in developing a joint product to support and encourage bystander reporter programmings in K through 12 schools. For this product, both SSTF and NTAC staff incorporate feedback from the K through 12 and bystander reporting communities, thereby improving the design, functionality, and recommendations of the products. Please join me in recognizing, from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Lindsay Burton, Don Ho, Paige Settles, Ryan Streeter, and Julia Trainer. Um, please uh, join me in recognizing our senior official performing the duties of the Deputy Secretary, Christy Canigallo, and our Assistant Secretary for Legislative Affairs, Zephanie Buto. <laughs> in fiscal year 2023, the human smuggling and fentanyl team arrested over 8,000 human smugglers produced over 5,000 intelligence reports, and seized over $38 million in real property. An enterprise-wide whole-of-government approach to slow the flow of fentanyl into the country was established to deter transnational criminal organizations' efforts in fentanyl smuggling and trafficking. These initiatives demonstrate the impact of components working collectively towards a common goal. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Franklin Abro, David Amador, Sam Assad, Ryan Bohm, Michael Carl, Daniel Castro, Ario Cavalieri, Chris Separano, Jorge Comas, Joe Dragonac, Tana Garcia, Bruce Gates, Ivan Grajeda, Stephen Greskovich, Patrick Hosey, Corinna Isaac, Megan Kennedy, Joseph Kester, Elizabeth Larson, William Mayer, Kenny Mejia, Mark Myers, Carlos Novoa, Dakota Nunweiler, Alfredo Ocasio, Jennifer Palmisano, Michael Pino, Robert Renner, Kenny Joe Ritchie, Mina Saad, Jennifer Stoltz, Montana Whitehead, Emily Paul, Alejandro Alaman, David Chloe, Michael Houston, Tracy Knott, Blas Nunez Neto, and Megan O'Rourke. <laughs> the Israel Visa Waiver Program team is recognized for their leadership, dedication, diligence, creativity, and perseverance. As a result of this new bilateral security partnership, Israel's law enforcement, border security, counterterrorism, identity and travel document systems, and immigration systems have been significantly improved, and the United States' security as well. Additionally, all Americans receive reciprocal travel privileges. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, Makaria Davis, David Dodson, Alexander Kisselberg, Melanie Mataxas, Eric Peters, David Sanchez, Anjum Angarwala, Catherine Andrews, Hilary Batier Johnson, Chris Dilworth, Caitlin Finn, Stephanie Hallett, Scott Jones, Kevin Kreutner, Adam Leonard, Brian Marwaha, Patricia McInerney, Andrew Miller, Mary Mitchell, Isaac Oransky, Robert Pascal, 
Riza Safari, Timothy Smith, Benjamin Snyder, Latasha Solomon, Samantha Sutton, Denise Taylor, Jacob Velaxio, and Jennifer Wetmore. Some members of um, our Office of Strategy, Policy, and Plans as well. The Operation Vigilance Sentry Health and Medical Annex Q Team is the operational plan of the United States to respond to a maritime mass migration via the Caribbean corridor. In 2023, a multidisciplinary team of the DHS medical, public health, law enforcement, and operational planners completed a two-year-long effort to comprehensively revise the Health and Medical Plan Annex Q for implementing Operation Vigilance Sentry. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard, Harry Coe. <laughs> U.S. Customs and Border Protection Radar Seizure Team sees an unmanifested and unlicensed shipment identified as a Chinese military radar system. The shipment was originally identified by Customs and Border Protection officers in Pensacola, Florida. CBP Houston seized this radar system and is currently working with the U.S. Attorney's Office to forfeit it. The identification by CBP officers in Florida and the seizure of this shipment by CBP officers in Houston represents one of the most important interceptions of foreign military equipment in CBP history. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Kristen Dubelier, Leslie Ann Kessler, and Adam Rausch. The Secretary's Award for Volunteer Service. This award recognizes significant contributions by DHS employees who serve as volunteers with nonprofit or community service programs or activities. The employee's contributions should be direct, sustained, and have meaningful results for individuals or larger public good. Mr. John Roop is a humble man of character who serves with grace and a smile in the office and the community. He has invested over 35 years in voluntary service to others. While growing up in the blue-collar streets of Flint, Michigan, he often needed the kindness of others to stay in school and stay out of trouble. He learned the value of community service and has paid forward these lessons through his service in food pantries and youth science and technology events, just to name a few. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, John Roop. Mark Carmel is recognized for his exemplary dedication to, to developing the ideals of citizenship, leadership, and seamanship in young women and men as a Sea Scout unit's lead youth advisor. Throughout the past year, Mr. Carmel devoted hundreds of hours to instilling in the Scouts a commitment to community service, being prepared for on-the-water emergencies, and learning how to have safe fun with their fellow Scouts. Please join me in recognizing, from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Mark Carmel. <laughs> Ms. Claire Gilliland actively volunteers with and advocates for Project Liberty Ship, preserving the SS John W. Brown as a training platform, museum ship, and living memorial to the U.S. Merchant Marines. She has spent over 450 hours conducting engineering repairs, coordinating dry dock inspections, and has taught three courses for the operation of steam, steam systems to over 60 merchant mariners. Additionally, Ms. Gilliland volunteers for the Sisters Circle as a long-term mentor for multiple high school students, preparing them for both college and vocational futures. Finally, 
Ms. Gilliland trained with the ProMedica Hospice Program, providing care, comfort, and companionship to those with advanced medical conditions. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard, Claire Gilliland. Secretary's Champion of Equity Award. This award recognizes an employee who has excelled in efforts to promote diversity at DHS through outstanding leadership and innovation. It may acknowledge individual efforts exclusively within DHS or efforts with external partners who assist DHS in meeting our commitment to diversity. Customs and Border Protection CBP Pride Team is recognized for beginning a grassroots movement to fill gaps in resources and support for LGBTQIA plus employees. The movement established CBP Pride, CBP's first officially recognized DHS employee association. Under the leadership of its board of directors and senior executive service champions, CBP Pride was able to develop a mission, vision, and strategy, organize the historic raising of CBP's ensign and the Pride flag together at CBP headquarters, produce special emphasis programming, establish a veteran Pride network, and initiate pronoun designation options for CBP in Microsoft Teams. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Martina Dent, Teresa Din, Wesley Little, Alex Melnick, Melissa Moran, Ariel Plisco, and John Schutz. <clears throat> The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency's Office of Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Accessibilities, or OEDIA's achievements in fiscal year 2023 stand as a beacon of excellence with a 99% completion rate and equal employment opportunity and inclusion essential training sessions for the CISA workforce. The Office's impactful publications, including articles on neurodiversity and mindful leadership, have enriched the organization's knowledge base, promoting a more inclusive and understanding workplace. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Cherie Cleckley, Lauren Iglehart, Nafi Karim, and Stefan Scott. <clears throat> The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency's Outreach and Employee Experience Team is recognized for their tenacity and commitment towards fostering a diverse and inclusive workplace through innovative approaches, strategic recruitment efforts, and diverse engagement activities. In the past year alone, the team has executed a total of 58 events aimed at enhancing employee engagement, brand awareness, and recruiting efforts. 34 of which were centered specifically around equity and diversity. This showcases their continuous efforts of making diversity an integral part of our DHS culture. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Jerry Delancey, Jose Edwards, Brittany Miller, Sasha Sardi Wade, and Terrell Washington. The Face Recognition Working Group is recognized for establishing a DHS-wide management directive on the use of face recognition and face capture technologies. The group worked diligently for a year and a half to create a policy that supports our mission, ensures responsible use of critical face recognition technologies to minimize disparate impact and unintended bias while protecting privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties, and to deliver a policy that is efficient and effective. DHS continues to lead by example by being the first agency to issue a policy on face recognition. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the Office of Strategy, Policy, and Plans, and the Privacy Office, Larry Panetta, Steve Yonkers, and Scott Matthews. Thank you. 
The Women Excel at TSA Leadership Team is an employee advocacy and resource group that represents everyone in the agency and extends to members of the Department of Homeland Security. The Women Excel at TSA Team is recognized for organizing outreach events and resource sharing activities at locations across the country while inspiring those from underrepresented groups to achieve their personal and professional goals. In fiscal year 2023, the Women Excel at TSA team grew by over 400 percent, expanding its influence and positively affecting the lives of people who safeguard the American public. Please join me in recognizing, from the Office of Strategy, Policy and Plans, Kristen Best. the Secretary's Award for Leadership Excellence. This award recognizes employees who exemplify the Department of Homeland Security's leadership philosophy, principles, and core values of integrity, vigilance, and respect. They have led or supported an effective team to achieve results, inspire and motivate others by example to work collaboratively and creatively, and mentor personnel towards their highest potential. The Border Barrier Legal Team advised DHS leadership and represented the department in significant litigation related to the Southwest border. To comply with the Impoundment Control Act, the team developed a legal argument and strategy and provided counsel to ensure DHS's actions were compliant with the act. As a result, the legal advice and litigation helped fund multi-billion dollar construction projects in support of the Southwest border operations. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Thomas Miller and Robert Walker. <laughs> U.S. Customs and Border Protection Customer experience leaders are commended for their commitment and advocacy in enhancing the experiences of the department's customers. Not only do they serve on the inaugural DHS Customer Experience Steering Committee, they also dedicate significant time beyond their regular duties to humanize products and services and align them with the department's mission. Each committee member has made notable progress in usability testing, streamlining processes, and conducting user research to ensure that a diverse range of customers, including disaster survivors, travelers, employees, mariners, and others, can access services effectively and fairly. Please join me in recognizing, from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, James McCayman, Manuel Menendez, Janet Pence, Jonahan Creighton, and Nora Mackin. Mr. Devon Hill is recognized for his exceptional leadership. In fiscal year 2023, Mr. Hill's team frequently provided top quality intelligence products and briefings to senior leaders at the White House and DHS, intelligence community, and U.S. state and local law enforcement. Mr. Hill and his team were among the first in DHS to describe the changing nature of the fentanyl supply chain and the tactics that transnational criminal networks use to produce and distribute the lethal drug. His team's analysis has empowered policymakers as they establish a worldwide effort to counter fentanyl flows, and he has helped save American lives. Please join me in recognizing, from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Devon Hill. Mr. James Lubbs is recognized for standing up the Survivor Advocate Program and being a mentor to the incoming Survivor Advocates. Mr. Lubbs embodies the Department of Homeland Security's leadership and core values wholeheartedly through his tireless efforts to honor our fallen by providing long-term support to their families. Please join me in recognizing 
from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, James Loves. <laughs> Ms. Jennifer Connell is recognized for demonstrating outstanding leadership by planning, coordinating, and executing eight critical and time-sensitive Starlink satellite communications performance tests around the United States. The performance tests were designed to determine whether Starlink commercial satellite services could support national security emergency preparedness and public safety communications in rural and urban areas. Ms. Connell provided guidance for test objectives, on-site daily work agendas, site selection, and communicated test environment requirements with facility and site leadership. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Jennifer Cano. <laughs> Mr. Gabriel Davis is recognized for leading the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency's planning and operationalization of the Ransomware Vulnerability Warning Pilot Program. Mr. Davis initiated this program with no additional resourcing or funding two months before the congressionally mandated date and operationalized the program within two weeks of inception. Since launching, the Ransomware Vulnerability Warning Pilot has successfully notified over 1,000 vulnerable assets and identified over 200 known exploited vulnerabilities associated with ransomware attacks. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Gabriel Davis. <laughs> Ms. Chloe Himmel is recognized for her core values of integrity and respect for others, as well as her maturity in assessing a team's needs for success. She motivated staff by actively listening and providing the necessary staffing and IT resources, helping to rebuild a struggling team within the Office of Legislative Affairs. Her leadership philosophy significantly boosted morale by creating growth opportunities to those who have been in mission support for over 10 years. Additionally, Ms. Himmel's leadership led to the implementation of a successful correspondence tracking system that monitors over 4,000 pieces of congressional correspondence. Please join me in recognizing from the Office of Legislative Affairs, Chloe Himmel. The Secretary's Meritorious Service Silver Medal Award. This award recognizes outstanding leadership, superior public service, or unusually significant contributions to strengthening Homeland Security. This award may recognize a body of work regarding remarkable innovation or notable resourcefulness and diligence that improve the effectiveness of one or more DHS missions. Customs and Border Protection <coughs> Soft-Sided Facility Team, or SSF, swiftly adapted to changing mission demands in the southwest border region, effectively overseeing the implementation of the $1.1 billion plus dollars in fiscal year 2023 Temporary Processing Facility Program. With the conclusion of Title 42, the SSF team successfully implemented virtual processing and communication capabilities, revamping over 700 phone booths. They also introduced 500 plus new virtual processing booths for long-term cost-effective processing infrastructure and provided short-term processing services for one to 45,000 occupants as needed. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Nolan Brown, Zachary Evans, Angela Flanagan, Anthony Harvin, Melissa Johnson, Patricia Keeley, Heather Madden, Dieu Nguyen, Cheryl Ogden, Kevin Sarf, and Tanya Smith. On the night of January 14, 2023, 
the crew of Coast Guard Rescue 6566, departed in heavy weather conditions to assist the 95-foot-long disabled tugboat Legacy. 35 miles offshore of Ocean City, Maryland, the crew faced winds of over 30 knots, 12-foot seas, and a below-freezing wind chill upon arrival on scene. The crew of Coast Guard Rescue 6566 successfully recovered three survivors from the tug, stretching the capabilities of their helicopter. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard, Caleb Howe, Mitchell Holloway, Nicholas Keenan, and Christina McGee. The Coast Guard Sector New York Unmanned Aerial Systems Detection and Mitigation Team is recognized for its collaborative and innovative approach to advancing security in the maritime domain's largest metropolitan area. As a tactics, training, and procedures involving unmanned aerial systems detection and mitigation strategies continue to mature, the Coast Guard Sector New York team established themselves as leaders in this new domain through development of a first-in-kind Interagency Detection Task Force, while simultaneously leading the Coast Guard in counter UAS mitigation in support of major planned events. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard, Francisco Colombarana, James Hockler, Daniel Moose, Derek Severns, and Michael Shoemaker. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Cybersecurity Division Binding Operational Directive, or BOD team, has changed how the federal government manages software vulnerabilities. By helping federal agencies understand which cyber issues are being actively exploited by threat actors, nationwide cyber defenders can prioritize their work to resolve problems that pose the highest risk. The BOD team is recognized for making our nation aware of the most critical risks collaborating with stakeholders to address them. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Quado Burji, Tom Hallowell, Jahanzeb Khan, Jonas Ogbaselazi, Kelly Schaefer, and Robert Shah. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Emergency Communications Division, Rural Emergency Medical Communications Demonstration Project, is recognized for their outstanding work to strengthen CISA's operations supporting rural emergency communications by building substantial partnerships with and offering financial assistance to rural governmental jurisdictions to improve their emergency medical service capabilities. The team strengthened CISA's operations supporting rural emergency communications by rapidly producing a new fiscal year 2023 notice of funding opportunity in response to the inclusion of rural emergency communications in the fiscal year 2023 Consolidated Appropriations Act from Congress. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Rosalind Allen, Mark Carmel, Tracy Gibson, Marsha Mathis, Scott Smith, and Deontay Tolliver. <laughs> the DHS Cross Collaboration Face Recognition Face Capture Directive Team is recognized for developing a groundbreaking face recognition and face capture directive and instruction. Face recognition and face capture technologies transform how the department delivers its services, including improving the customer experience, supporting law and civil enforcement missions, and securing our borders. These technologies are inherently privacy sensitive and must be used in a manner that safeguards privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Office of Strategy, Policy, and Plans, 
in the Privacy Office. Larry Panetta, Scott Shelton, Steve Yonkers, Scott Matthews, and Marilyn Powell. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency District Detroit Full-Scale Exercise Team delivered CISA's largest full-scale exercise to approximately 800 participants from 24 different organizations over three large venue sports complexes. The exercise scenario involved multiple simulated events, including an active shooter and an improvised explosive device. This was the largest operational exercise CISA has conducted to date. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Jillian Borofsky, Gary Boyer, Stacia Connor, Michael Egbert, and Kurt Gardner. The Family Reunification Parole Process Legal Team is recognized for its ability to analyze review and publish Federal Register notices announcing seven novel family reunification parole programs within short deadlines. The team did thorough examination of complex immigration, litigation, and regulatory issues in the context of sensitive bilateral relationships and important foreign policy objectives. The team successfully developed improved access to lawful immigration pathways. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Nicholas Morales and Louisa Slocum. <laughs> the Law Enforcement Coordination Council, or LECC, is recognized for accomplishing 29 key requirements of Executive Order 14074 involving 26 Department of Homeland Security agencies and offices. By supporting, enhancing, and improving DHS law enforcement, the LECC's work has strengthened our security and increased transparency. The Office of Strategy, Policy, and Plans and the LECC established deeply collaborative relationships with the Departments of Justice and Interior that will carry forward across administrations. Please join me in recognizing from the Office of Strategy, Policy, and Plans, Ann Armstrong, Edward Fleur, John Iorio, Teresa Kennedy, Matthew King, and Leslie Legger Kelly. <laughs> the Maritime Security Response Team East, Counter Unmanned Aircraft Systems Team, supported six national special security events operations across the vast Coast Guard Atlantic area of responsibility. They provided protection for the President of the United States, members of Congress and the Senate, foreign heads of state, and hundreds of thousands of spectators and participants at these high consequence events, like the United Nations General Assembly and the Boston Marathon. Their subject matter expertise and collaboration with interagency partners fostered a real-time data sharing network that enabled the whole of government effort to combat the ever-changing and expanding threat environment. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard, Michael Bartels, Brennan Coles, Sam Feruzzi, Andrew Gaddis, Jedidah Hadden, Jonathan Laraya, Daniel Moose, Jared Ogden, James Panko, Elizabeth Randall, and Dante Santoro. <laughs> the Marine Safety Unit Savannah Leadership Advisory Council accumulated more than 200 volunteer hours coordinating nine successful events over 10 months, including leadership training, LGBTQ plus Pride Month, Lunch and Learn, and numerous unit-level interactive cultural heritage learning events. The notable initiatives directly support both the Secretary and Commandant's diversity action goals. Please join me in recognizing, from the United States Coast Guard, Derek Burke.
collaborating with interagency partners such as the Federal Aviation Administration, U.S. Border Patrol, and U.S. Coast Guard, the Joint Scan Eagle Technology Demonstration Team flawlessly deployed the Scan Eagle medium unmanned aerial system in a beyond visual line of sight setting within the United States. The team showcased the system's operational capabilities in both land and maritime environments, demonstrating its efficacy and versatility. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Roymi Nieves, Lucy Oy, and Jeffrey Schneeberger. The Southwest Border Coordination Center, or SBCC team, brought together attorneys from across DHS headquarters and component general counsel offices to provide one-stop, one-voice legal support to the SBCC. The team provided time-sensitive legal advice and counsel and assisted with the development and implementation of Southwest Border-related policy. The team assisted in drafting interagency requests for assistance negotiating interdepartmental and interagency memoranda of agreement, and ensured compliance with a myriad of court orders. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Angela Cherman, Kristen Duvalier, Colleen King, Caitlin McKenzie, Nicholas Morales, Aaron Reinke, Mark Salvia, and Shay Weathersby. Ms. Heather Dalton conducted a video stress test analysis of the existing wireless infrastructure on the National Mall during the 4th of July to analyze network congestion during mass gatherings. The stress test results provided relevant technical information and support to the National Security Council's National Capital Region Security Interagency Policy Committee. Ms. Dalton's work provides critical data to policymakers allowing CISA and other government partners to improve the security and resilience of communications systems. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Heather Dalton. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence Prevost, is recognized for superior mission execution while supporting the Department of Defense interdiction and recovery of the People's Republic of China high altitude balloon off the South Carolina coast. He coordinated with multiple intelligence and law enforcement partners, leveraging all relevant remote sensing information to provide critical intelligence in sufficient time. Mr. Prevost rapidly provided the salient information needed for the highest echelons of military leadership to accurately calculate risk and then execute an order from the President of the United States. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard, Lawrence Prevost. Secretary's Exceptional Service Gold Medal Award. This is the highest award for service granted by the Secretary of Homeland Security. The award honors exceptional leadership or service that is distinguished by achievements of unique national or international significance, reflecting great credit on the Department of Homeland Security by markedly improving the security of the homeland. The Secretary may present the award to an individual or group. U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Enforce and Protect Act, Transshipment and Country of Origin Investigation Team, collaborated with internal and external partners to disrupt an organization of Chinese, Malaysian, and U.S. companies engaged in duty evasion. The team identified a combined $395 million owed to the United States government. Their actions sent a strong message of deterrence to illicit actors that CBP will take all available measures to combat illegitimate trade and safeguard U.S. economic security. 
please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Donald Anderson, Lee Baxley, Victoria Cho, Stephen Emilius, Christina Horgan, Deborah Scott, Patricia Tran, and Paul Walker. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency Cyber Notifications Initiative team is recognized for ensuring that over 2,300 vital alerts and warnings were provided to owners and operators of critical infrastructure in fiscal year 2023. This initiative has mitigated risk to critical infrastructure, strengthened coordinated response efforts, and enhanced the overall security posture of the United States. Please join me in recognizing from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Ariel Bain, Gabriel Davis, Natasha Eastman, Lauren Judd, Linda Kantz, Bradley Lundy, Christopher Moretti, Brett Roser, and David Stern. The Family Reunification Parole Team is commended for their swift and efficient efforts in meeting tight deadlines to promptly announce the new family reunification parole processes to the public. The team dedicated themselves to ensuring a seamless Im implementation of these processes, consistently adapting and adjusting based on the, based on the most up-to-date information. Their exceptional leadership, invaluable public service, and commitment to offering secure alternative pathways to the U.S. beyond irregular migration to the southwest border have significantly enhanced homeland security. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Graham Dudley, Brittany Simon, and Timothy Tyler. Attorneys from across the DHS Office of the General Counsel, in coordination with component counsel from CBP and ICE, directed a groundbreaking settlement of the Ms. L litigation, the national class lawsuit over family separations that occurred on the southwest border. The team spent thousands of hours over two and a half years developing innovative solutions for equitable relief to resolve all plaintiff's claims. The resulting agreement, which affects hundreds of families for years to come, provides guidelines for future family separations, processes for reunification of separated family members, and ensures meaningful support and services for class members inside the United States. Please join me in recognizing from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, Julie Collar and Louisa Slocum. <coughs> Ms. Catherine Andrews is recognized for exemplary work to support Israel's accession into the visa waiver program. At great personal sacrifice and risk during a 10-month temporary duty to the U.S. Embassy Branch Office Tel Aviv, Ms. Andrews' efforts strengthened the bilateral security partnership and substantially enhanced every component of Israel's law enforcement, border security, counterterrorism, identity and travel document, and immigration systems. Such progress was only possible through her leadership, diplomacy, and diligence. Ms. Andrews represents the best of DHS in her willingness to go above and beyond in service to the mission, the Department of Homeland Security, and the American people. Please join me in recognizing, from the Office of Strategy, Policy, and Plans, Catherine Andrews. Lucy Wright is recognized for serving as the Chief of Enforcement at Coast Guard Sector Key West. She expertly stood up the Incident Management Team for Operation Vigilance Sentry as the Operations Section Chief and guided 25 ships and three small boat stations in the interdiction of over 10,000 migrants attempting to illegally enter the United States by sea. She displayed exceptional interagency acumen by steering the Florida Keys Regional Coordinating Mechanism 
that ensured seamless coordination between DHS components and other federal, state, and local partners. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard, Lucy Wright. Our final award category is the Secretary's Award for Valor. This award is the highest recognition for extraordinary acts of valor occurring either on or off duty. The employee will have demonstrated selfless response by performing courageously in a highly dangerous or life-threatening situation to protect another's life or to save significant assets or infrastructure from harm. During the early morning hours of January 21, 2023, while patrolling in the Straits of Florida, the Coast Guard Cutter Laguerre Migrant Interdiction Operations Team observed a person struggling to stay afloat in the water with no vessels in sight or on radar. The team expeditiously saved the man from the sea, learning that he had fallen from an overloaded and unseaworthy vessel carrying nearly 400 Haitian migrants in perilous seas. The team quickly assessed the situation, found the vessel, and safely rescued the migrants. The team saved and humanely cared for 395 people. Please join me in recognizing from the United States Coast Guard, Michael DeFrancisco, Matthew Garcia, Cody Johnson, Joseph Simmons, Corinne Ulrich, and Jonah Whitmer. On November 6, 2022, Mr. Timothy Deal witnessed the driver lose control of their vehicle, crash into the corner of a bridge, and roll down an embankment into the river. Without hesitation, Mr. Deal ran across the bridge and waded into the river to assist. Mr. Deal found an elderly driver trapped inside the vehicle. With gasoline leaking and sparks raining down from the navigation console, Mr. Deal rapidly assessed the situation and noticed that the driver was trapped. As the water level was rising in the vehicle, he maneuvered through the murky water, climbed atop a set of rocks, and pried the car's passenger side door open and lifted the man, a Vietnam veteran, to safety. Please join me in recognizing, from the United States Coast Guard, Timothy Deal. Thank you to all of our awardees for sharing your talents, making a commitment to public service, and representing the department in the highest manner. Let's have another round of applause for all of our awardees. <laughs> Secretary, closing oh, remarks. Thank you, Jean. Um, you know, just the recitation um, of the awards uh, captures so poignantly and powerfully the diversity of work that is performed across this department and all that work is performed with such extraordinary excellence, um, sacrifice and dedication. I want to thank and congratulate the award recipients, all of your colleagues including your leaders, uh, the families and loved ones who helped make it all possible. Thank you for everything that you do. Congratulations. Secretary, as this is our last ceremony in the National Capital Region, I just want to take a moment and just say thank you to all the volunteers who uh, supported this event today. Um, looking up in the booth, I want to thank all of our colleagues in the Office of Public Affairs, both on scene, behind the scenes. Uh, that get the word out, that live stream this event, that make a lot of magic happen uh, in the background. So thank you to them and, and to my colleagues in the management directorate, uh, both those who are here today and those who are in the background who've done so much work to, uh, we have over 1,800 awardees this year, 
uh, and so many here in the NCR. I just want to thank them for their dedication uh, in, in making this happen. And so with that, that concludes our formal ceremony today. Just, I know Mr. Halter gave you some instructions. I'm going to give you just a couple more. If um, component and headquarters leadership want to join on stage with your awardees uh, to be in the photographs with the secretary and the acting deputy secretary, if you could join us side stage and we'll move you in and out for the photographs. And then to everyone who's going to come on stage for photographs, I see lots of like green visitors uh, badges. If you could take those off, if you have a PIV or CAC card, can you take that off as well? Anything that you don't want to have in the picture, your glasses on your head or around your neck or whatever, take them off so they aren't memorialized in your picture uh, for your award. And so with that, um, we'll be happy to join, have you join us on stage uh, and receive your award. And thank you so much for being with us this morning. It's been my honor to serve as your MC. Thank you.